Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, talking about the last Trump. Now, around this season, plenty of people will come on and ask if it's possible that we're going to see a rapture during this time. That what we see about over in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and I think 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, they always wonder if it is possible that we're going to see these events take place now and in these holiday seasons because there are so many other channels that are claiming so. But when they come over here and they ask me, a lot of times I will simply say no because I figure they don't want an explanation. They don't really even want the truth. They just want me to tell them that it's going to be this season and that it's going to be tomorrow or something like that. And guys, I just can't do that. If the scripture doesn't line up with it, I'm not going to be able to tell you like those other guys will. So in this video, I actually want to go ahead and explain myself. Why am I so sure that you're not going to see any of these rapture type events anytime soon? Now, I know a lot of you guys are clicking off the video right now, and I guess that's OK. The truth is not for everybody. And. They'd rather go back and listen to those guys that have been stringing them along all these many years, getting mad at me because we're not there yet. We're not time yet. So let's get into it. Now, the verse I'm showing you on the screen, I'm sure you've heard many times. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 52, which says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Now, there is a lot going on in this verse, but the first thing that I want to show you is what these trumpets are. We're over here in the third testament of the Bible, as you saw. Let me just read a few verses here as we talk about the last trump. Now, verse 96 says, The last whirlwinds and the last battles, with their quotas of bitterness, are yet to come. It is necessary yet for all the forces to agitate and the atoms to spin in chaos so that afterwards there can come the lethargy, the fatigue, the sadness, and the weariness that seem like death. Now this could be seen as describing the day of the Lord, where the earth will go through all of these calamities. Uh, most of them are going to be the result of the pole shift that we are currently experiencing. We'll look at verse 97. It says, and that will be the hour when the sublimity of the conscious, the vibrating echo of the trumpet will be heard, announcing from beyond that the kingdom of life and peace comes to men of goodwill. So there you have what the trumpets are. What kind of sound we're expecting to hear? Is it something, you know, audible that we can hear with our ears? Well, that's materialistic. That vibration from an audible tone is material in nature and therefore is unrelated to our father who is coming back in the spirit. So what is telling us here is these trumpet sounds are actually vibrating from our conscious. I'll say that again. The trumpet sound is vibrating from our conscious. It's coming from within. We're hearing it from the, the sublimity of our conscious. And for proof to show that it is correlated to that verse we saw over there in First Corinthians, let's read verse 98. It says, and before the voice of that trumpet, the dead in spirit will raise weeping tears of repentance. And the father shall receive them like prodigal sons worn out from the long journey and fatigued from the great struggle. So there are the same words that we saw over in First Corinthians and in Daniel and other places all over the scripture where it talks about how the dead will rise at the sound of this trumpet that is coming from our conscience. But then it goes on to say, and seal their spirits, bestowing upon them the kiss of love. And then it gets into, you know, how humanity will be changed and how we'll be a different people and all of that. Day. But I wanted to show you where the trumpets are coming from, because, you know, there's a lot of people who are listening with their ears. And it's that other kind of ear that we should be listening to. But anyway, let's get back to the discussion on the last Trump. And in this video, I plan on showing you when the last Trump will be. When can we expect those events and why we are too early and why many of us are actually wasting our time trying to change our father's mind and make him speed up his timing of things. But we're going to find out that that's not going to be the case.
Anyway, let's come over here and let's do a Bible search for the word trumpet. I'm going to show you something really interesting. When we do a search for the word trumpet, you see there, there are 404 times in the Bible that we see the word trumpet. The first time we see the trumpet is over in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 13. Now, that's significant in itself. That the first time we hear the word trumpet is in Exodus chapter 19 and verse 13. It's because this is when they were actually preparing to get the covenant that starts in chapter 20. The covenant was given on Mount Horeb in the midst of these loud trumpet blasts and all of this lightning that pretty much scared all the people away. Except Moses who went up to actually get the covenant. Well, you see I'm talking about there in verse 13. And you see how it went down in verse 16, where you had the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all of the people that was in the camp trembled because they were scared of, you know, all that was going on. And you hear all about that trumpet and you see it goes on to continue to talk about the noise of this trumpet there on Mount Four. But then the next time we see the word trumpet is as the root of the word trumpets in Leviticus chapter 23 when it's talking about the memorial of blowing of trumpets. Now, what's interesting about this verse and all that it talks about as far as the memorial of blowing of trumpets, it never tells us to actually blow a trumpet. Now, let me say that again. You heard me right. In all of the scripture that talks about what it is that we're supposed to do on Rosh Hashanah, the one thing that we are never commanded to do is to actually blow a trumpet. Now, I ain't saying it's wrong. I've been blowing the trumpet on the memorial of blowing the trumpets for a very long time. But my point is, is that the scripture doesn't tell us to do so. I looked all over the scripture looking for when we are actually commanded to blow anything on Rosh Hashanah and I found nothing. So I even came over to the list of the 613 commandments given over in uh, Judaism 101. This is supposed to be all of the rules from the Torah law written in a table. So I did a search for trumpet. And the only time that it comes up is down in rule number 454, which says to sound the trumpet at the offering of sacrifices in the time of trouble. And it's another time when I blow the trumpets, it's when I'm in trouble. Guys, it, it actually works. They they come to help. The angels come to help when you blow the trumpets in a time of trouble. But anyway, we'll cover that in another class. But we see that's the only time trumpet is listed here. And we see the word blow is not in here at all. But when we look up the word sound, we see there's three times the word sound. And one of them is related to the shofar. But notice down here where it mentions it in rule number 132, according to uh, jufec.org, it says to hear the sound of the shofar on Rosh Hashanah. It doesn't say to blow it. It says to hear it. And then when we actually click on the verse, Numbers 29 and 1, it says in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe the sacred occasion. You shall not work at your occupations. You shall observe it as a day when the horn is sounded. So it's not actually given any commandment to sound it. It's just saying to observe the day, observe the day that the horn is sounded, but we're not told to sound it. But then now here in rule 216, it says to sound the ram's horn in the sabbatical year. So let's look at Leviticus 25 and 9. It says you shall count off seven weeks of years, seven times seven years, so that the period of seven weeks of years give you a total of 49 years. Then you shall sound the horn loud in the seventh month or on the tenth day of the month, the day of atonement. You shall have the horn sounded throughout your land. So see how this is commanding us directly. A strong command that we shall sound the horn is telling us to blow the horn. Like I said earlier, we didn't see any time in the whole scripture that tells us to blow anything on Rosh Hashanah. We're being told to actually blow the horn or sound the shofar loudly in the seventh month on the 10th day of the month, the day of atonement. And when we come back over here to the King James Version, it's more clear that what it's saying is that we are supposed to sound the trumpet in the Jubilee 
on the day of atonement. This is the time that we are told to sound the trumpet. I mean, sure, we sound them when we're in trouble. We sound them over our offerings and, and this, but we're actually talking about timing, feast days, and, and prophetic fulfillments. Well, that makes this verse significant, very significant, because there's only a certain time when we are told to sound the trumpet. Every 49 years, we're told to sound the trumpet at Atonement Day. And you say, well, why is this so important? Because we're only given 120 Jubilee years. We're only given 120 of these over the course of 6,000 years. We're told to blow the horns during the Day of Atonement on the Jubilee year. And then we're told that we're given here a limit of the Jubilee years that we would actually see. And we're told that it's 120. But now when you look in the Epistle of the Apostles, uh, Messiah told the apostles that he would be returning in the 120th Jubilee. We see that down there in verse 17. He says, after the 120th part is fulfilled, then he will return. Again, letting us know that we only have 120 Jubilees. So the last trump occurs at the 120th Jubilee. And that's when we can expect to see any of these events talked about in 1 Thessalonians or 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The last trump is to blow on atonement day in the 120th Jubilee. So this is why I could be so sure while people are guessing and coming up with all of these fanciful scenarios when we dig into the scripture to see what it has to say. It lets us know that we still have yet time before these trumpets blow. See, what's going on here, before these trumpets blow, Israel has to be unified first. Israel has to be given the chance to recognize our Messiah. And that's what they are going through leading up to this day of atonement. They're actually in the 10 days of all, or the 10 years of all, 10 years from the prophetic fulfillment of Rosh Hashanah, which occurred back there in 2015, 2016, with the end of that tetrad, it started the clock on 10 years of repentance. This is why you see so many people finding the scripture and getting into the law, keeping feast days and learning Sabbath days and all it is, that is the vibrating echo of the trumpet that's pulling these people in, it's calling these people in, calling Israel in and giving them the chance to relearn the covenant, to get back into the covenant over the course of these 10 days or 10 years. And at the end of these 10 years, then you see the atonement. And over the course of these 10 years, these books are opened. You have the book of the righteous who will be granted eternal life. But then you have the book of unintentional sins, which is the Israel who is being called back. People who are in our father's fold, who have been confused by those who say we are not supposed to be keeping the feast days and doing the commandments and all of that. These are the people who just didn't know and are now learning that we're actually supposed to be keeping feast days, the commandments, the laws, and everything else in the Torah. They're given 10 years to learn this. And if they don't learn this over the course of this 10 years, at the end of the 10 years, anybody who doesn't recognize this, you see down there, names will be written in the book of the wicked, and they will be the ones who will be turned over to Satan and led into the wasteland where he will destroy them there. So. We can't expect any type of rapture before this date is up. That just would not be fair to them. It would not be fair to us for any of these events to happen before this prophetic fulfillment of the Day of Atonement. But it sounds like I'm getting my feelings involved and what I think is involved. Let's go back to the numbers because what it says is that these events happen at the last Trump and we know that we have at least one more trump to go. So let's see when it is. Now, to understand when the Jubilee is, when the next Jubilee is, we have to count on the book of Jubilees. 
anybody that tells you that we don't know when the Jubilee year is or that it's been lost and all of that, it's because they've hidden the book. They've hidden the book of Jubilees and or don't want to recognize the book of Jubilees, which is the only book that tells us when the Jubilee was way back then. We can see in the last chapter, chapter 50 and verse 4, that when Joshua crossed the river Jordan, he did so in a Jubilee year. In other words, that was a Jubilee year when he crossed the river Jordan and the walls of Jericho fell. And the Bible gives us enough information to know exactly when that time was, when it was that they crossed the river Jordan and when the exodus was. All we have to do is look at the timing of the births of the descendants of Adam and when they occurred using the scripture from Genesis chapter 5. And then we can look down at the descendants of Noah and when they occurred in Genesis chapter 11. Then we get information about Abraham, the covenant, and the Exodus. And so with all of this biblical information, we know that the Exodus was in 1496 BC and they crossed the River Jordan in 1456 BC. And according to what we saw in the book of Jubilees, that was the 50th Jubilee. And just for grins and giggles, we could jump to see that the Messiah actually came the first time during the 80th Jubilee, 50 plus 30 is 80. So you had the crossing of the river Jordan in the 50th Jubilee, and then the first advent in the 80th Jubilee. But then when we add another 40 Jubilees to get to 120, what we see is that the last Jubilee cycle started in about 1975. We are now currently in the last Jubilee cycle which, like I said, started in 1975. That would have been the beginning of the last Jubilee cycle. So when does it end? 2024. The last trumpet will sound on the Day of Atonement in the year 2024 and not before. No matter how we wish, no matter how we want, nothing is going to make this trumpet blow before the year 2024. And something else that's particularly interesting about the year 2024 and the Day of Atonement is that it falls somewhere around October the 12th. Well, when we come over and we look at Caesar the Great and when he conquered Babylon, we see that it actually went down on October the 12th. In other words, the first time Babylon fell was on October the 12th. But anyway, that's just that fact. I don't know what's going to happen on October the 12th. Probably nothing on that particular day. Because when the prophetic fulfillment of Atonement Day occurs, it more than likely would not be a 24 hour event, but will last for an entire year. So we can look for the trumpets to blow there in October. And then we have the elections there in November, followed by the convergence of Hanukkah and Christmas there in December. If you don't know the significance of that, watch this other video that I'm going to put up for you. But that will be at the end of the year that all started with the X across America that occurred at the beginning of the year. So the year 2024 is going to be real interesting all the way around. The thing about it, we shouldn't be wasting our time waiting on that. We have a lot to do. Before then, this is the time of repentance. This is the time of relearning the law. Because as you see over here, what happens after then is that Satan takes those people who have not found themselves written in the book of life into the wilderness, into the wasteland. And what is that talking about? The global earthquake, when all of the buildings will fall. You can imagine there will be no electricity, no running water, no shelter, no food. These people will be in a wasteland kind of environment where they will simply die because they don't know how to keep the law. They don't know what to do. They don't know what makes them clean and what makes them unclean. They don't know how to summon angels to their protections. They don't even know how to pray. This is what we are supposed to be learning until that day. 
So don't waste your time watching videos of these guys that's going to tell you that the rapture is going to happen next week, only to come back next week and tell you that it is going to happen a week later. They're just stringing you along, just like they have been doing for many, many years. They're going to continue to string you along. Satan will get his sacrifice. It just seems like some of these people are trying to make us that sacrifice. If you made it this far in the video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification button because we'll be putting out more videos like this in the future. Father willing, especially around this holiday season. You can check out some of the ones we've done in the past. They're all still relevant because our father's feast days, just like his laws, never change. Hit the like button if you got anything out of this video. Hit the dislike button if you didn't. But either way, leave me a note in the comment section and I'll see you there.